wish to call this meeting to order. I wish to make the following announcement to show compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, known as Senator Benner, uh, Byron, and Bear, the Open Public Meetings Act, which was amended and supplemented Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of the State of New Jersey, passed 1975. Notice of this meeting was given by adopting the annual schedule, location, time, and date, sending copies to the Home News Tribune, posting in Borough Hall, and filing a copy of the Borough Clerk, seven days following the annual organization meeting is fine. Rise for an invocation given by Councilman Wallace, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, everybody. Please take a few minutes to just uh, bow your head and uh, give thoughts of the day, a few minutes of thoughts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. Katie, can we have a roll call, please? Councilman Wallace. Here. Councilwoman Rasmussen. Here. Councilwoman Encero. Here. Councilman Grazel. Here. Councilman Camarano. Here. Let the record reflect that Council President Muldoon is absent. And Councilman uh, Camarano will be the acting Council President for yes, this evening, based on seniority yes. and experience. Your Honor, I move the agenda. We open the agenda session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any items for the agenda session? Your Honor, I have a number of housekeeping items. Um, the community, on the new business consent agenda, Items E, F, and H, I would like to remove them from consent and vote on them individually. Okay. Uh, also on those, I would, on E and F, I'd like to get an explanation from the administrator so that everybody has an understanding as to what they are. Okay. Uh, we also had a resolution for E that was changed. Uh, it should be on everybody's desk. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify exactly what the purchase of the camera equipment is for uh, so everybody understands and it's for, it's to replace the cameras in the back of the, what we call the council chambers. Um, but the original resolution said it was the court. And I was a little confused and some others were about, were we buying court equipment? Because we do have court equipment here for when they do, um, they do televised um, court sessions with, between here and the county jail. So everybody understands we had a rewritten to reflect the council chambers, which is what we call it, uh, even though it's a courtroom as well. And it's for the cameras that are in the back for replacing them. The other issue is item G, uh, we would like to pull all together. That's the approval of the person to person transfer for the plenary retail liquor license. We're gonna have to pull that and hopefully have it ready for the next meeting. Okay, and that was under the advice of our attorney, correct? Yes, G yes. Is, G is being pulled because it's not Totally yeah. completed? Yes, we're waiting for the input from uh, alcohol beverage control uh, prior to uh, approving the transfer. Okay. I have no other issues, Your Honor. Anyone else? Um, Your Honor, I have a question. Okay. Um, I would like to see if we can get an update on what's going on with the Pearl Street uh, parking lot, how things are coming along. Okay, uh, my understanding is that the contracts have been signed at the uh, American Legion is signed off on the floor plan and uh, is awaiting the um, the elevations and that it's moving forward that the environmental study is uh, done but it's not in yet it might be in next week or the week after and that we have to do no further action that the action taken in 2010 and the adjustments this year have completed the boroughs the the council's part of it and now it's up to the uh, planning board, uh, well, it's up to the, the parking authority and the planning when the developer comes in, when Woodmont comes in with its plan to the, uh, to the planning board. So then they'll be reviewing their plans and, and uh, moving from there. But everything is set to go and we're in pretty good shape. All right. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a couple of announcements, Mayor. Okay. Um, first, I'm happy to announce that the Edison Greenways Group, the nonprofit that has worked for years to get the Middlesex Greenway up and running, will receive a $90,000 technical assistance grant from Together North Jersey. This is a uh, planning initiative that looks at sustainability, transit system, connecti connectivity, 
and transit-oriented development as the central framework for integrating plans, regulations, investments, and incentive programs at all levels of government to improve economic and environmental conditions. The focus of the grant is the Greenway and its links to the surrounding areas of Metuchen, Edison, and Woodbridge. All three towns will be partners with the Edison Greenways groups, and at some point in the coming months, you'll hear news about uh, upcoming outreach meetings. Uh, separately, um, but related, on Saturday, October 26, at the Menlo Park Mall, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Together North Jersey is having a general outreach session in the mall asking people what do we want the region uh, to be in 30 years and what would we like the region to look like. And so I'd like to congratulate the Edison Greenways group for getting that grant. And I see Mr. Stoschel, if you would, Walt, do you want to say a couple words or uh, just be acknowledged by the, by us? Councilwoman Sarah did a great job explaining what, what's going on. Okay. There's nothing I can add to that. Uh, we thank the borough and I thank the council. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know she's done a considerable amount of work on this, and and should be applauded for, for getting that grant. The second group of people I'd like to thank are the volunteers who put on Metuchen's first ever beer fest on Saturday, and the people at home who are watching might be wondering why did Metuchen have a beer fest on Saturday. It was actually to raise money for the 1807 Old Franklin Schoolhouse. Now, I'm a member of the BIL, uh, sadly I cannot be there, um, but the BIL is the organization that owns and operates the schoolhouse. It had applied for a state uh, grant earlier in the year and it did not get the full amount that it had requested from the state, but it still uh, needed money to pay for uh, a lot of repairs and repainting and they decided to get very inventive with fundraising and reach out to a new generation to help preserve and uh, save this treasure in our community. So the proceeds went towards the building. There were three bands, all with local roots. Uh, there was a very uh, large army, well, small army of enthusiastic volunteers, some of whom are in the audience, who set up, manned, broke down the festival, and there was also a lot of support from local businesses and I see some of those business owners here in the audience tonight as well. Um, La Rosa's, Breeze's Caribbean Cafe, Two Chicks with Chocolate, uh, Marafiki, which sold tickets, and of course, Haley's Harp and Pub, which also sold tickets, promoted the event, and uh, uh, served as a liaison with the brewers. So I just want to thank the community for putting that on, and I hope there will be another one next year. <coughs> so okay. thank you for that. And um, I'd like to bring up one more thing. This mm -hmm. is probably the longest time I've ever taken so far this year in an agenda session. But I'd like to bring up something that former Councilwoman Rubin was trying to establish during her tenure. And it's something that ties in very nicely with something we'll be doing later in the evening uh, with our Complete Streets policy, and that's to establish uh, a disability commission. So I'd like to get an update from that because it's my understanding um, that we did draft, uh, before I was on the council, a sample um, ordinance for a disability commission. And that's something that um, I'd like to uh, have the council uh, discuss and consider in the coming months uh, because I think it's important for the town, uh, you know, to serve all of our residents uh, going forward with a disability commission. I agree, but I don't recall us adopting an ordinance. No, not that we adopted an ordinance, but it was discussed. Yeah, I think we had a draft, actually, we were working and, on. And I, had and turned I think we were waiting to hear about from, that, from the attorney about reviewing all of the commissions. Right. Okay. Okay. So maybe we could have that in November or December. The only problem is with an ordinance, you have to do it all in the same year. Oh, to adopt. Yeah, you, so you'd have to have the first reading as well as the second reading okay. all within the, the, the same year. Is it feasible to have that uh, for November I mean, I could, December? I, if I were... Because we still have time to do Oh, that. yeah, yes. Yeah. You, you still, I mean, practically have time to do it. Uh, but if I, my recollection is correct, uh, I had prepared a draft ordinance that I had distributed, uh, and then the way it was left was we were going to look at 
all of the committees and o the ordinances right. relating to all of the committees uh, uh, and uh, move on from there. I mean, I, I'd be happy to provide you with the draft of the ordinance. Yeah, I, I mean, the only concern I have with that is knowing how long it took us on the zoning ordinances. I think it was two years. I think if we're going to move forward, it would seem like we shouldn't wait until we review it. The other commissions are already in existence. We're kind of reviewing whether or not they're needed, how they function, which is great. But in the meantime, I think it's worthy of a discussion to kind of move forward. And I, okay. just, I don't want to wait two years. I okay, so if, been a while. Dennis, if you could prepare that for the next meeting, okay. then we I could agree. we could look no, at it. I, I agree. I, okay. Knowing, you know, we start talking about complete streets in January and we're adopting it tonight, I don't want to start discussing an accessibility commission in November and adopt it, you know, at the end of next year, you know. So okay. I'd rather just move forward. Okay. Any other items? Fine. Seeing no other, I move we close the agenda session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We now have a, a petition that's going to be filed, and I would be willing to entertain people coming forward and, and speaking and filing that petition with me uh, about a dog park. So please come forward. If I may, Mayor, I think uh, our two special guests uh, also have a presentation they'd like to make. Okay. Thank you. Come, come on. All right. All right. Just turn and face the audience and tell us any, how you how you started this and and what we're trying to do. Your Honor, if you could just make sure to talk into the mic. Okay. Mayor, I think they rehearsed in front of the mic in front of the audience, if you'd oh, like. Oh, okay. It's easier to talk. This you is okay. okay here? You want to do it there? You can talk here. Okay. You get a better camera shot where you're standing. <laughs> yeah. So you can go home and watch it. Yeah. If you take a step up, then the mic would. Yeah. 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 You want to step yeah. up here. on the step, step up here. Step and speak. Does this back up. Yep. Oh, yeah. Come on up here. There okay. They work up here. All right. Good evening, my name is Lily Hoover, and we're here to talk to you about um, considering a dog park for Metuchen. And a dog park is a fenced-in area. It's green, it's off, it's uh, more or less a place where dogs can run and exercise off leash. And I'm a eighth grader at Edgar Middle School. I live at 65 Rose Street. I'm a Girl Scout cadet, and I'm a member of the troop 80962. And we're also doing this for our Silver Award, and that is a, an award for the Girl Scouts, and it's the highest honor a cadet can uh, earn. And we decided that getting a dog park would be something important to us because we both really like dogs, and that's kind of how it kind of started. And so we decided to make this our project, and it has a lot of rules. Like, uh, it has to be in local area. It must be sustainable. And some of the steps are like identifying the issue, picking the project in the community, and developing it. And Hi, I'm Abby Brooks. Um, I'm an Edgar student in seventh grade. I'm a Girl Scout in Troop 80417. Um, my troop leader is Jermaine Weitzner. Um, <laughs> I'm a dog owner, just like Lily. And my dog's name is Olivia. She's a Portuguese water dog. And I really wanted to do this project to give her a place to play because sometimes she can be really hyper and she just needs a place that's better than around us to play. I also have two dogs, one being a Shetland Sheepdog, the other Chihuahua. The Shetland Sheepdog, her name is Seven, she needs about two miles of exercise a day for her to just calm down and sometimes it's really hard to get in <coughs> plus when it's getting cold out. So. We did a lot of research with this uh, project, and we found out that a lot of people in Metuchen don't have big enough backyards or enough time on their hands to get a place for their dogs. And there's about 400 dogs licensed, and assuming not everyone has their license, there's probably about six to 700 dogs in the town. And we were, think we were looking into how there's not a lot of parks that work with dogs because of all the safety issues. And, we would, and it would give, um, the community, like a nice place for everybody to meet together and the dogs to socialize because a dog always 
is less barky, less, to, you know, rude or aggressive when it has, you know, a lot more training with the dogs. And we looked up a lot of stuff from the American Kennel Club and a lot, we went to the Highland Park Dog Park and we looked up there and in Rocky Hill. Um, so we brought the petitions that we put up at the fair and that we posted online. You know how many people signed it? Uh, yeah, online there were around 250 and at the fair there were 323. Okay, it's quite a number. Yeah, and we've gathered from that that people are pretty excited from getting a dog park and we're really excited too because having them show their enthusiasm. When we talked to people, great. they were just like, oh, "Really, a dog park? Where is it?" And we're like, "No, we're trying to get one." And they would just go, "Oh, okay." <laughs> we heard a lot of, you know, I have to hike my dog all the way up to Highland Park for a dog park, and that doesn't really seem fair. We've been to the one in Highland Park, and it's it's a good dog park, but it's a schlep. Yeah, it's not great to drive that far just so that your dog can come home smelling like dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thank you girls, and tonight I will be naming a, a committee of 11 people, and I'll be naming Councilman Grazel as your liaison. Hopefully we could get started right away. I'm going to propose that we meet next Monday evening if that's okay with you folks here because there's no meetings at Borough uh, Hall next week. So we'll set up a time. We'll have the councilman arrange a time. I'd like to be at the first meeting, but uh, I, I think it's a great idea. I am a dog owner. We've had many dogs in our family. I have one now that's a, a rescue. I encourage people to, to, to get rescues. Uh, ours is half St. Bernard and half Believe it or not, Chihuahua and Pug, and we did the DNA test uh, thing and sent it out, which is kind of neat. But um, I know that when our dog is exercised more, she's more behaved. And I think that you will find that. And I know that there has been, a, over the years, a number of people coming up to me saying, why don't we have a dog park? And I think it's a great idea. I appreciate the work that you've done and uh, continued work that you're going to do so that we can get this to completion. So thank you very much, and I think they deserve a round of applause. I'm going to file a petition with the borough clerk right now. So, thank you very much, girls. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And uh, I am very excited to get this moving. I think it's going to be a good thing for the borough. Uh, as I said, we have a lot of owners that have expressed interest over the years. Um, it was very easy to get volunteers. Anybody that I talked to said, and I, and I announced it at the uh, chamber meeting that I was attended last week, and I had another volunteer come up immediately saying that she was interested in serving on the committee. So I think it's a, it's a good thing. Um, we have a presentation now. Or should I, do you want me to, na to announce the? And do Why don't you go ahead and announce okay, the I'll, I'll announce the dog committee right now. Uh, we have Scott Gallagher, Andrew Lackland, Amy Brooks, Abby Brooks, Lily Hoover, Maggie Cook, Stuart Sloshman, Evelyn Ferretes, uh, Jackie Morris, Alan Regan, Marianne Vahala, and Suzanne Kay. Uh, are the people that will serve on the committee and work with you ladies and you ladies are also part of the committee. So uh, I look for some results in the very near future. Hopefully if we have some recommendations we could work with our borough administrator and look at putting that into our next year's budget. All right, whether it be in the capital budget or the regular budget, we'll have to find out what the cost is and look at different spots uh, where we could do this, but I'm truly excited about it getting a dog park, so, okay? Very good. Great. Right. So consider those people appointed. Uh, Councilman, I'll get you the addresses for everybody so we can contact them for the Monday meeting and you figure out what time. Yes, sir. Okay. We now have a presentation from the uh, Metuchen EMS to the American uh, Italian Club.
would they please come forward? Councilman Wallace, you're going to handle this presentation. You can come all the way up. I was taking some extra stuff with me. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm Fran McLean, and I'm the uh, finance trustee of the Metuchen First Aid Squad. I'm the I'm the president of the Metuchen First Aid Squad. I'm Susan Carl, and I'm Frank Camerano, a trustee for the American Italian Civic League. Um, the American <coughs> Itali Italian Civic League, uh, over the years, unfortunately, has had a dwindling membership, I assume, because of your young age. <laughs> and um, so as the or organization discovered that they had to disperse their funds and disband, fortunately for us, they chose the Metuchen First Aid Squad as one of their benefactors. And so in appreciation for them recognizing us, we'd like to recognize them and present uh, a certificate of appreci appreciation um, in recognition of their past and present members who gratefully accepted the blessings of America and now return them to help those in need. And <clears throat> it's organizations like this that help organizations like us help people like you. And it's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. We no longer have a building. We ask that it be displayed at the uh, first state school yes. building. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay, you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Some of you people are out here. These are two very uh, good members of the squad. There's several more members sitting in the back. The job they do here is uh, outstanding. And uh, Mr. Camerano has been around here a long time himself, and I'm. Knew most of the members of the uh, Italian American Club when the building was down there. I think there's two houses there now. Two houses. Yep. <laughs> so I think uh, the Italian American Club giving the money to the First Aid Squad was really a, a very nice thing to do. Hey, so, can we have the sure. members of the First Aid Squad stand so we could recognize you, please? one thing um, coming up we will also be putting out a fund drive um, we do this twice a year um, this is how we make um, our uh, ambulance stop and everything else this is how we pay our bills um, keep our ambulances on the road we have two ambulances in our first responder uh, truck that um, you know, we have to keep on the road, we maintain them, um, and it's uh, people like you folks who help us do that, and um, it's donations that help us keep them running um, throughout the years. So without your donations, um, we cannot uh, do that. So we truly appreciate the Italian American Club and all of you folks who keep us running throughout the years. So I just want to say, you know, keep giving, and uh, anything that you can give is truly appreciated. So thank you very much, and, uh, you know, keep giving. So, so and stay well. Pancake breakfast is when? Yes, the breakfast with Santa will be coming up December 8th. So come out and join us for breakfast with Santa starting at 8 o'clock in the morning, running to, I believe, we run till one or two o'clock in the afternoon. So please come out and join us and sit on Santa's lap. <laughs> I, I won't sit on Santa's lap, yeah. but I'll be there again to help to, to help to help in uh, in in cooking yes. and putting the sausage on the plates yes. and I'll volunteer my time. And again. I promise we will cook the bacon the night before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. And thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you.
Yeah, I move the approval of the council minutes of January 7, 2013 and January 22nd, 2013. I think we're going to have a request for some comment after the second. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Who has comment? Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong thing. Okay. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We're now going to open it to the public for any questions or comments. You st step forth and state your name and address, please. Hi. I'm here uh, seeking equal time for cats. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Jim Did Preston. you dress up just for that? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm the uh, Borough Emergency Management Coordinator, and I'm here to commemorate the anniversary of Hurricane Sandy. And I just wanted to take a, uh, time to talk about what we went through as a borough and to thank a lot of people that I owe thanks to for getting the town through what we uh, got through. Um, before the storm hit, uh, we started having planning meetings and Chief Rentenberg from the police department and I were on the phone almost constantly, even before the media outlets started to report that the storm was gonna be a threat to the East Coast. Uh, we decided that we were going to have planning meetings and um, we started three days before the storm hit where we actually sat downstairs and had meetings between all the emergency services, public works and the borough. Um, so I'm just going to go down the list of uh, the people that helped me out and helped the borough out. Uh, starting with the police department, Chief Rentenberg, um, couldn't ask more from a police chief under the circumstances. Very dedicated to the job. Um, the police have to worry about enforcing the law and maintaining order. Um, we were worried about traffic control. We were worried about the dangers of high winds and all the other hazards associated with the hurricane. Uh, Rob was with me every step of the way, and I appreciate everything he did. Dave Irizarry, Captain Irizarry of the police department, once again, you could not ask for a better guy to turn to in an uh, emergency. Uh, when he wasn't bartering with other municipalities to get gasoline, he was making sure that the uh, generators here at Borough Hall were running and that the, the police on the beat were uh, getting everything that they needed. Um, Lieutenant Mike Kilker, same thing. Uh, Mike uh, was very concerned about the first responders responding out into the storm, making sure that they had the safety uh, measures that they needed and that everybody was watching out for everybody else. And most importantly, after the storm was over, it was Mike Kilker who brought an antenna for a TV so that we could get uh, reports from the outside world to see what was going on because, as you know, the cable system was entirely down. So, uh, and Dave Lee Antonio, I can't forget Sergeant Lee Antonio. Um, there's the, the guy, um, he's an unsung hero of the police department. He's really the, the glue that holds the whole thing together. Uh, there's nothing that goes on in that police department that Dave doesn't have something to do with. The good stuff, I should say. Uh, the fire department. Um, we're very lucky in Metuchen to have a, a, an extraordinarily well-trained group of volunteer firemen. I'm proud to count myself among their members. And uh, Rob Donnan was uh, involved in all the planning meetings. And we could not have a better uh, chief in charge of a volunteer fire department than Rob Donnan. And I'd like to thank him as well. EMS, I'm happy that... Are they here? Uh, one, one's left. Uh, uh, Warren Brooks, especially, was part of the planning committee. Um, luckily, we had no serious injuries, but the Metuchen uh, EMS uh, was there every step of the way as well. JFK Medical Center, Scott Corbin, uh, they were a fledgling uh, ambulance service in Metuchen at the time, uh, but they stepped up. They attended our planning meetings, and they provided daytime ambulance service in the borough. Uh, so I'd like to thank them for that. Um, these guys don't have flashing red lights and sirens, but they're just as important, and that's the Department of Public Works with Fred Hall. Um, Fred, the, the, really, there's nothing in this town that could get done if it wasn't for Fred and the Department of Public Works. Everything from uh, keeping the sanitary sewers running to clearing the roads to picking up the debris. And, and, and speaking of uh, the debris and picking it up, if, if it weren't for Fred Hall and, and Rob Rentenberg and Dave Lee Antonio helping out, with the applications to FEMA, the borough would not be recovering the tens of thousands of dollars that we're getting back from FEMA as a result for, of Hurricane Sandy. Um, the Board of Education uh, also attended all of the planning meetings. Uh, Vince Caputo, the superintendent, Mike Harvier, and Bruce Paragallo, the uh, uh, su uh, principal of the high school. They pledged all the resources of the Board of Education to the use of the borough. Whatever we needed, they were making sure that we had it. In fact, we had one of their uh, Board of Education dump trucks became a police vehicle during the storm 
that we use to respond to emergencies. So I'd like to thank the Board of Education and Superintendent Caputo. Bruce Paragallo at the high school, uh, he was the first one to step up and offer the high school as a charging station and a place for people who had no power where they could go to keep warm and to uh, charge their electronic devices. You may recall that there was a, a water emergency. Um, the, uh, I got a call in the middle of the night that the Middlesex Water Company plant was going down and FEMA was sending a tractor trailer loaded with water to Metuchen. Um, I really didn't have any idea what we were going to do with it, but um, uh, Corporal uh, Vinnie Russo uh, found the truck up on 287 and escorted it into Metuchen, uh, brought it to the senior center. Um, the Department of Public Works brought over uh, a dump truck. We unloaded the water at, um, at Public Works, brought, brought it over to, in dump trucks, over to the Senior Citizen Center where uh, we had a forklift that was donated along with the labor by Steve Epstein at Borough Ace Hardware and we unloaded all of the water into the parking lot at the Senior Center and then Bruce put out the word, Bruce Paragallo put out the word to the high school students and we had a very dedicated group of high school students and other citizens in Metuchen that helped us distribute water uh, all day. And it was thousands of bottles of water, so I thank them. Um, Beacon Hill, the gas station, um, they made gasoline available to our first responders. I have to acknowledge them. The Borough Improvement League, uh, Tyreen Reuter, um, she was right there um, offering everything that she could do to help us. Luckily, we in Metuchen didn't suffer as badly as some other towns. And as soon as uh, the BIL saw that um, the resources weren't needed here in Metuchen, uh, Tyreen and the BIL launched a, a wide, a, a large scale relief effort, sending supplies, collecting supplies here in Metuchen and sending them all over the tri-state area for people who truly needed it. Um, the churches, uh, the Assembly of God Church offered us, us their facilities. Uh, the New, Hel New Hope Baptist Church uh, offered uh, and, and was a Red Cross distribution center. Like I said, we didn't really need it here in Metuchen, thank goodness, but uh, they did help people all over the tri-state area as well. Uh, the mayor and council, uh, first, uh, Bill Borth. Uh, Bill, right from the beginning, um, we, whatever we needed, Bill was right there uh, offering it to us and making sure that we had what we needed to do the job that we had to do. So thank you, Bill. Uh, the mayor and council, I hate to, um, I hate to uh, single people out, but Mayor Vahala, we had meetings with uh, the senators and assemblymen, the president of public service. The power in Metuchen wasn't getting turned on quick enough. The mayor attended a meeting with uh, uh, the president of public service, and after that meeting, things really started to happen. So thank you, Mayor Vahala. The council president at the time, Pete Camerano, um, attended every one of our planning meetings, and uh, when we were out there slugging water off the tractor trailer, uh, Mr. Camerano was there helping. So Pete, thank you for your leadership in that. Um, uh, my wife. My wife, uh, I, I have to thank her because she's, she's been alone in every single storm that's ever hit Metuchen. She's been by herself with candles and, and bailing out the basement. So thank you, Judy. And of course, the people in Metuchen. Um, the people in Metuchen stuck together. Um, they helped each other. They offered to help out um, the borough, the emergency services. And uh, I couldn't have done the job that we did here in Metuchen without them. So. I hope I didn't leave anybody out, um, but I'd just like to offer this thanks on behalf of myself personally and on behalf of our own touch and to all these people. So, thank you. Chip, you did leave somebody out yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, was gonna, I was going to pick up on that if you did. Without you organizing, coordinating, you kind of fly under the radar a lot. Most people don't even know we have an emergency management coordinator. But, I, you know, between that storm, the previous storm, and just about every other storm we've had, um, day or night, um, you're out there, you're telling us what to do, and, m and more importantly, you're helping us get the assistance from FEMA. Um, so, you know, give credit where credit is due. We're only as good as our planning, and you handle all that, and you somehow manage to do it when you have a real job, too. So, we appreciate that, and um, yeah, that's a big one to leave out. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I, I think on on the whole, we saw Metuchen really pull together, and it was part your leadership uh, and a big part of it because you have to have somebody that's going to be there in, in control and saying what do we have to do, when do we have to do it, and how, how are we going to do it. And you know we, sp we spent hours and hours. Uh, I had a second grade tour here today and I mentioned how many hours we were here. It seemed like people were almost sleeping over in the, o in the OEM center downstairs. We had police officers sleeping in trailers out in the back. Uh, 
you know, it, it was a trying time. Uh, it was a trying time. It was a trying time to get PSE&G to get their act together, and they did a very good job, but, you know, the circumstances were uh, a storm that was just amazing, and we pulled through it, whether it be the donation of a boat to the fire department from uh, Councilman Camerano. Uh, we, were, we were planned and we were prepared. I hope we don't see another one, honestly, because, uh, and I, I would say when we got that water, uh, I know Councilman Camerano's wife and my wife were there helping to give out the water for a while, and, Blue, and Bruce Paragallo came through with those kids at the high school. The next day, my arms were like jello. Yeah, we weren't going to make it without those kids. <laughs> yeah, we, it, that was, I forget how many thousands of cases of water that we gave out, and, and members from the community. They'd get their water and say, Mayor, do you need help? And they'd pull their car over and give us an hour or two giving out and Dan Hirsch from the planning board. People came out and just, you know, uh, helped us out to, to get that water. And, and Steve Epstein with his group, we didn't have enough room to drop all the water at one time. So it was constant, give a call and get another, another pallet of water out here. And they were, they were flying out the door, so to speak. But it was uh, a good example of how a community could pull together and do, do the job to, to uh, get through it. So thank you again, Jim. Okay. Any other comments? Um, I would actually like to thank, I see Linda Koskowski out there. She was one of the first ones on Facebook that put something out that she had power. If people wanted to come over and put food in the fridge, if people wanted to come and get warm, have tea, whatever, I don't know you know, what some of the neighbors would have done without her opening her home. And I don't know if anyone else in the audience did the same thing, but it's something that I know that Linda did. And uh, I know that many other acts of kindness like this happened around the borough. And is there anyone else from the public that would like to make a comment? If you do, Ed, please come forward. Uh, uh, I was not down here to comment on that, but I'd like to second the uh, comments about uh, Jim. Uh, I, I, I remember Jim on, I don't even know when the storms were, in my son-in-law's basement, he was handing me a, a, a mop, you know, that's my image of, of Jim uh, doing his emergency management coordination. But I agree, he's uh, an outstanding uh, citizen and uh, um, he, we were fortunate to have him and both in the Irene and then the Sandy and I hope we don't have another one. I, I hope he gets a lot of rest. Um, but uh, I, I came down here just to speak uh, shortly, and I find this very interesting because it's the first time I've spoken since I've left this building from this side of the aisle, anyway, uh, down here. But uh, I wanted just to address the Complete Streets uh, resolution because uh, when I saw it was on the agenda, and Tom Rockefeller sent me an email and uh, actually re reminded me that it was on the agenda. I wanted to come down and uh, offer my support for that resolution because it's something that's probably a culmination of uh, 25, 30 years. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, uh, Professor Nelson from Rutgers and his students who produced a, a report, Matuch, in 2001 uh, that's sort of quaint uh, right now, but that really got us started on this uh, um, approach that now has been uh, uh, suggested in this uh, new nomenclature of complete streets and providing for pedestrians, bicyclists, and uh, essentially traffic calming. So when I read the resolution, I thought this is appropriate because Metuchen has always been in the forefront, uh, whether it be, I think we had one of the first, or if not the first, the second pedestrian uh, lighted crosswalk in the state of New Jersey um, uh, in this town and uh, you can see n numerous other activities that have gone gone on uh, since then and I think this resolution will give some direction to planning and zoning boards uh, and also to citizens um, to uh, encourage you know walking and bicycling uh, in this community and not that we're against uh, cars because I drove down here tonight uh, I didn't want to uh, risk my life uh, at night but uh, I think they have an appropriate place uh, but so do uh, pedestrians and bicyclists so I just want to offer my uh, uh, encouragement in support of that resolution thank you thank you mayor Anyone else from the public? Wow. Is 
Is it alumni? Alumni? Uh, the two have not been on the other side of the table uh, until tonight. Uh, Sherry Rose Rubin, 114 Spring Street. Um, I came here tonight to express my support for the dog park and my support of Abby and Lily, who um, I met with in the beginning of the summer when the idea began. And we had some informal conversations about what it would take to bring a dog park into town. And I, I'm very pleased that their efforts have been uh, responded to so positively and that the commission for the dog park is being established. And I know that no matter how wonderful an idea is, there are uh, oftentimes people who feel uh, strongly against even a very good idea. So I'm, I'm certain that the council will consider all of the questions as they arise related to the dog park. Um, and I think the commission that is going to look into these issues can, can look beyond just the benefit to the dogs. Um, we can see an, an, an enormous benefit to the borough of Metuchen if we open our community to people to come in, bring their dogs, spend time here. Uh, when I go to the dog park in Highland Park, inevitably I spend time in Highland Park as well. I'll stop for a cup of coffee or do an errand so um, our economy and our Main Street could even benefit from um, opening it to visitors who come to the dog park. Um, additionally, in, in conjunction with groups like Bike Walk Metuchen and our Complete Streets effort, uh, a dog park would give us another opportunity to get out of our cars and spend time in, in the borough doing something that would benefit not only taking cars off the streets, but it could benefit us from a health consciousness point of view as well. So, um, however, coincidentally, as I sat here today, I, I, um, I have to uh, thank Councilwoman Incero for reviving the Disability Accessibility Commission. Um, as you know, this was something that I felt strongly about for many years pre previously, and a as we know, things sometimes get delayed, and even the best intentions don't always uh, come to fruition. But when we talk about things like complete streets, we have to take in, into consideration issues of accessibility. And unless you or someone in your family travels with um, a person with a disability, be it a mobility impairment or another type of disability, we aren't aware of the barriers. And I think if we assemble a commission of people who have knowledge about what those barriers are, we will become an even more welcoming community. Barriers are typically things like steps or ramps that are too steep for someone to use. But there's things like uh, curb cuts that are not um, entirely accessible. There are um, steps to get into many of our shops on Main Street. There are people in our community that we don't see because they can't get to where they want to go. So there are people who might say that there aren't a lot of folks with disabilities in Metuchen, but the reality is, is that our, our community is not as accessible as it can be. And in fact, we're already beginning to lead the way in accessibility with our audio uh, crosswalk on Main Street. We're one of the only communities in the entire country to have an audio crosswalk. So please, I encourage you to, to take the commission separate from issues that you have with other commissions in the borough and pass an ordinance that establishes um, an accessibility commission in conjunction with your complete streets efforts. So thank you for your time and I wish um, Abby and Lily and, and the other dog owners a lot of luck with the dog park. Thank you, Councilwoman. Anyone else from the public, please step forth and just state your name and address and give us your comments. My name is Linda Koskoski. I live at 3 Goodwill Place, the energy house as Dorothy <laughs> pointed out. We were like the one house in town that had energy. And it's pretty brave to admit it. I'm surprised nobody gave you a hard time. <laughs> Actually, they, everybody just came over. It was like a party for a week in my house. It was very good. Um, I also have a, a shop in town. I'm at 20 New Street um, downtown. It's a fair trade store. Um, and I've been in business for just about two years now. We'll be celebrating our second anniversary in November. And um, over the past two years, we spent a lot of time educating our community about uh, what fair trade means. And um, in doing so, we've built quite a nice and reliable clientele because when people find out about fair trade, they want to support it. Um, fair trade as a business practice ensures that producers are paid fair prices for their products and labor. 
um, and it builds economic sustainability for those people. It also empowers women and it protects children from forced labor. Um, it allows opportunities for education, poverty alleviation, and also for health care. And it gives producers more direct uh, market access. And it also sets um, strict standards for um, protecting the environment and the production of, of these products. So um, you may not know this, but October is Fair Trade Month. So in honor of a Fair Trade Month, um, my business partner and I have decided to sort of build on the groundwork that we've laid over the past um, two years. And we would like to um, engage in a campaign to make Metuchen a fair trade town. Uh, there's uh, an organization called uh, Fair Trade Towns USA and it encourages towns to um, commit to the, the idea of fair trade by um, encouraging fair trade in every avenue of community life. Um, so to that end, we've put together a, um, a committee of people, and we have Tyrene, so I know we're going to be successful, <laughs> um, to help us um, create the Fair Trade Town. And so what that means is that over the next couple of weeks and months, um, we are going to be encouraging other retailers to carry Fair Trade products, as well as you know my own shop. Um, we are going to encourage um, community groups to incorporate um, fair trade purchases into when they're buying their supplies, like if they offer coffee or tea, you know, at their functions to consider buying fair trade products. Um, we are also going to be um, um, sort of really pushing ourselves out into the community more than we have been by, um, like I'll be doing a, a speech at the high school in November. I'm going to be screening a movie at the BIL in November also called Girl Rising, which um, highlights the, the uh, challenges that women have in underdeveloped countries and how education helps them improve their lots. Um, so, and that's perfectly in line with fair trade. So we're going to be out in the community more educating everybody about um, you know, the fact that you have choices when you're buying stuff. You don't have to buy products from uh, factories that burn down in Bangladesh. You have uh, a way to transparently buy your products now, and that's through fair trade. So we'll be promoting that. Um, so you're wondering why I'm here. I'm going to ask the borough for help. I need your help in this. Um, oh, and I also wanted to point out that there are a number of our neighboring communities that have already spearheaded this effort. So Highland Park is a fair trade town, and so is Princeton. So I feel like if we become a fair trade town, we will be joining them as leaders in this commitment to fair trade. Um, so how you can help Borough Council is we would like you to adopt a resolution declaring Metuchen to be a fair trade town. Um, and I don't really know how to get that done, but I wanted to bring it up here tonight. And everything that I've talked about now, I've already sent to you in an email, so you're going to get that in your email. And um, I'm available, obviously, for any questions you might have, and we can help you with wording for a resolution. I'm looking to you to sort of guide me on um, what the next steps would be um, so that we can have Metuchen and be a fair trade town and have that. I'd, I'd love to see that sign. You know, um, you know, welcome to Metuchen, a fair trade town, because I think it shows uh, where our commitment lies and that our commitment lies to equity and, uh, you know, fair trade for all. Thank you. Thank you. If you could uh, give a copy of that resolution to the clerk. Uh, I'll send it to you. I don't, I, I have wording. I didn't, um, I wasn't sure exactly how it worked, but I do have um, a resolution that I can send, so I will. Okay. And then Thank if you. Katie, once you get it, if you could give it to uh, Dennis. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm there. Great. Um, yes. Can you refer us to some kind of source, either electronic or written, where we could get a better, more comprehensive idea of what that would entail, being a fair trade town? Sure. Um, FairTradeTownsUSA.org would be the place to go. I can um, email that to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, that was a great presentation. And I just want to say I'm a regular customer of Narafiki. And I just happen to be wearing something tonight. It's a fair trade <laughs> item supporting our businesses. Thank you very much, Dorothy. We do appreciate it. And you're not the only one on the council that is a, a fair trade customer. I notice when people find out what fair trade is about, they really want to support it because they do understand uh, about the equity that uh, needs to take place in, in business. So thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the public with a question or comment, please step forth. Just state your name and address. Um, Tyreen Reuter, 16 Durham Avenue. I didn't realize Linda was going to be here tonight, but in case anyone in the audience um, or at home is listening, 
when Linda first started talking about fair trade and making Metuchen a fair trade town, um, I was like, what? Like, are we going to have lots of um, like Swahili banners everywhere? I mean, is that, oh, we're going to try and get all of our shops to, to change. And actually, one of the things that she told me, which was really interesting, and I think um, Sergio from the bookstore had looked into this too, is that there's already a number of stores in town that sell fair trade items, not just Marafiki. And, you know, it, it's very interesting because it, it's kind of a way of looking at it that you don't realize that it's there. They even talked about the fact that um, Target sells fair trade coffee. So it's not that we're saying you don't go to a certain location or you wouldn't go to a certain store in town, but that you would come here, you'd look around for like the fair trade symbol and you would support a business that supports that effort. So I just thought, you know, to kind of clarify from when the first time that I heard it, I wasn't entirely sure what that meant from a shopping perspective or that they were advocating for some change in how our businesses here operated, but it's really more support and awareness about what it means to be a fair trade enterprise or to support it in any way. So just wanted to say that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Please just step forward to the mic. Hi, Helen Regan, 96 Maple Ave. Regarding what uh, Jim Graciano was talking about, about the storms, I had just this idea. We have a lot of beautiful old growth trees in town, and we can't tell the average layperson which tree is going to become a hazard during the storm. And instead of taking down all the old trees, like I thought some time ago, what about like, doing an ultrasound on the trees to find out which ones are just shells and which ones are just solid? This way, we, this way we can put an X on the ones that have to come down and leave the other ones standing. This way they don't become a hazard, they don't take down more power lines or got a bit fall on a house or someone's car. Actually, we had a study done, uh, a grant to go through and do an inventory of trees, mm -hmm. I guess four years ago? 2009. Yeah, I remember four we years ago. about this. Okay, um, and it, it, that identified which trees are a disease, which trees are good, and which trees have uh, issues. Okay. Okay, and that was a, I forget how many thousand dollars, but. I remember it, you said like a million it, dollars to do the. It wasn't a million, but no, it, was, it was. It was a lot. It's the, the inventory was about $30,000. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank the you. other issue, if I may, Your Honor, many of the trees that fell during the storms were maybe not the ones that were damaged. They came up at the roots and, and toppled. They were perfectly healthy trees that just pulled up sidewalks and toppled. So it's difficult and it's always a challenge and we're trying. Uh, and you don't want to just clear the trees because that adds so much to the character. So it's a challenge and we thought we we're heading in the right direction, then that storm, when a storm like that hits, you just don't know what's going to fall. There's no way of knowing. Anyone else from the public, please step forth. Hi, I'm Kevin Brenneman, 114 Columbia Avenue. I came to comment very quickly on the complete streets. Uh, but before I do so, uh, having been at this meeting, there's a couple of things that came up I feel compelled to uh, acknowledge. I was active with uh, Metuchen and EMS during the storms both uh, through Irene and Sandy. And I can't say enough how important the uh, OEM office was to the overall function. It is one of those rather invisible uh, functions in, in a time like that. And it was uh, very important, and it just worked out very well for all of us. And I think Jim does deserve a, uh, a lot of credit for that. So thank you for that. Um, the donation you gave them to touch an EMS, as a former member, I can say how important that is for an organization like that to keep, you know, being able to provide for the town. That was a wonderful thing that you did. Um, so now back to the uh, complete streets. The adoption of this, I just want to um, express my gratitude for the borough council and the mayor for what will be an adopted uh, complete streets agenda. I think it's very important for this town um, from an EMS pr perspective, from a, as a biker, a daily biker, a daily walker, and then I even drive, um, seeing uh, the way the town functions and moves from those different perspectives, um, it does show me that it's, a, it's really a necessary thing for this town. Uh, you know, as a driver, I know how traffic can be horrendous. As a pedestrian, I know the dangers of crossing to different uh, intersections. As a biker, on a daily basis, to and from the train station, it's like taking your life in your own hands sometimes. Um, I've been injured, I've been doored on Main Street, fra hairline fracture in the leg. Uh, then also had to unfortunately respond on an ambulance to some similar calls for hit pedestrians and bicyclists in the town, which is a very, very 
uh, it's just a very unpleasant situation to have to confront. So I applaud you for uh, adopting this policy, and I really do hope this is the beginning of a lot of very positive movements in, this, in the whole Complete Streets effort, making the town safe. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anyone else from the public? Could please step forth. Small comment. I think I understood fair trade. Back in 1943, I worked in a drugstore. First thing we did was look up fair trade because people, that's what they wanted to do. So I commend your, your group on Thank you, Mr. Camarano. <coughs> Just you state your name and address, please? Walt Stoschel, 2118 Oak Tree Road, Edison. Um, I'm not familiar with your, the way you do things here in Metuchen. Is this where we comment on the complete streets, or do you yeah, have yeah, a public? It's open to the public at any time. public uh, portion during the consent agenda? To no, you could comment now. Okay. Um, the Middlesex Greenway Coalition supports the adoption of the complete streets policy. Uh, for 20, over 20 years, we've been working on getting the Middlesex Greenway established here in Metuchen, Edison, Woodbridge, and this is a, another step to connect the Greenway to the communities. Um, I am very pleased that Metuchen is doing this. Uh, we're, we're very supportive of the complete streets policies throughout the state of New Jersey, and we hope that Edison and Woodbridge also adopt such a policy, and it's good to see Metuchen taking the lead on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I might add that Councilwoman and Sarah and our a number of uh, groups, our police, our engineer, our planner, our borough administrator, um, all had input, including the council president and the, and the liaison to traffic and transportation and the policy that was developed. So we think we have a very good policy that fits Metuchen. And if anybody else, like Woodbridge or Edison, would like a copy, they could call our clerk and get a copy of it. And, and uh, you know, put it to use. Okay. Anyone else from the public? My name is Tom Bish. I'm an architect. I live at 51 Kempson Place. I would like to encourage the council to adopt the um, Complete Streets resolution. Uh, I know Matachin has been an early adopter of a lot of the components of Complete Streets over the years. Um, I've been a resident in Metuchen for over 20 years. I have two kids who have grown and, and left. Uh, and I can tell you that in spite of all the best efforts, there's, uh, it's still not a great place to teach your children how to ride a bike. Uh, it's still not a really great pedestrian city. I think there's a lot more that we can do. Uh, and I think Complete Streets is sort of a perfect kind of um, uh, way to look at a city like Metuchen because we've got county roads, uh, you know, we've got highways that are coming through our town. We've got Main Street, which is a, a car artery as well as a shopping street. Uh, we've got this whole, you know, hierarchy of uh, car streets and pedestrian streets in town, and I think it's important in complete streets, it helps us sort of merge everything together and make everybody aware of everybody else, and I think that's extremely important. I think there's a lot of creative ways that people are now proposing across the country to do these things. Uh, and I applaud you for considering the resolution, and I hope it passes because I think this is going to be really good for Metuchen. Thank you. Thank you. I think one of the goals to, uh, in speaking with the group that helped to put this together, is to come up and formulate a plan for bike paths to the Greenway. You know, accessibility and getting people to the Greenway. Right now, we don't have that plan. And I think by having this, this policy in place that we could work out a plan where we look at certain streets and say, OK, you know, let's focus here and focus ways to get people to the Greenway, whether it be from various areas. I also want to tell you that one of the applications that we have into DOT right now is for sidewalks from the Michael Drive area to the um, Greenway itself. Uh, there are no sidewalks for that whole area of town coming down. They would have to cross New Durham to come down and cross again uh, across Middlesex Avenue. So if we could get that grant and put those sidewalks in, it makes it a, the accessibility to, to that uh, greenway and to coming into town uh, even, even better for that whole section. And it's a whole little section from, from that area of town. So 
We are cognizant of that. We're looking to try to get the grants. We're looking to try to develop uh, a plan which will make access to the greenway with bicycles. Our planner has been talking about this and involved in the in the process. So, but thank you for your comments. I, I forgot to mention the bike rack is full tonight, so that's that's good. That's that's, that's one of the that's one of the other things that this plan helps to, for us to do with our zoning board and our planning board to put a requirement for either bike racks or bike rooms um, uh, into a, 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 an application acceptance. So that's, that's something that we're looking at doing, okay? Anyone else from the public? I think we set a record tonight, but that's, we can keep on going. Oh, good, thanks. Yeah. Karen Alexander, 1 Lawrence Street. Um, I'm also here to express my support for the complete streets policy. Um, my husband and I moved to Metuchen nine years ago, in part because it was a transit village, and that was something that we were looking for in terms of a community and a place that we wanted to choose to be for a while. We also were anticipating loving Metuchen and wanting to grow old here. And, one of the th and that has turned out to be true. Nine years later, we're nine years older and <laughs> planning on staying. And one of the things I think is so important about Complete Streets is it really embraces people of all ages and all abilities being able to participate in civic life and have more ease of mobility in the community. And whether that's children going to school or the aging population that we see in the town feeling welcome and being able to access all of the resources that are in the community, that's another aspect of Complete Streets that I think is really to be celebrated. And I thank you for considering the policy. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Uh, Nelson Lee, live at 16 Bounty Street. Um, I happen to also be the manager of the farmer's market. And um, I'd like to speak in support of the complete streets policy as well. Uh, but before that, I just wanted to say I probably have to talk to Linda about fair trade. Um, I'm wondering if the market can somehow somehow fall in that category of like the shoppers buy directly from the farmers and cutting out the middleman if that somehow falls into that. Um, but I do, uh, I'm very encouraged that we're considering this complete streets policy. And um, I know that we all know that the traffic is very difficult for bicyclists in this town. I'm trying to teach my daughters right now how to uh, bicycle in, in traffic and in the town. And I have to get up at seven o'clock in, uh, in the morning on Sunday when there's no traffic when I feel safe enough to bring them around to say, okay, you know, here's where you have to pay attention at the bare minimum without the cars interfering with everything. So um, I'm very encouraged with this, um, the prospect of having complete streets. And um, as manager of the market, I would certainly love to see more shoppers coming with bicycles, um, doing their shopping and driving away on their bikes with that. And, and if there's some way we can, could connect the greenway to the market so that people could get there um, to and from the market by the greenway, I don't know how that would happen, but it's a great concept. See, that's one of the ideas that our planner has and what we're working on. And as you're aware, we do have the grant for the town center Piazza Green, which the, the market will still be able to be right. accessible to. And so that's something that we could try to work on in the future. That'd be great. Thank but you very thank much. you for your comments. Anyone else? Uh, Sean Massey, 93, Highland Ave. Congratulations. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, uh, the Complete Streets Initiative that we're taking up tonight, it's, it's obviously been a long time in the making. Uh, I want to first and foremost uh, thank the council, in particular, uh, you know, two people, Councilwoman Encero and uh, the man who was just too happy he couldn't come tonight, uh, Council <laughs> President Muldoon. Uh, we wouldn't be here without their efforts and uh, uh, Jay has said it, that, and, and he's absolutely right, that this will really be a fantastic, quite powerful tool in the, the government's toolbox to, to promote the kind of smart growth and development that we want to see uh, in our borough. And I think the, the mayor uh, spoke to it before when he was talking about connections to the Greenway. The great thing coming out of an adoption of a resolution like this, you know, you've got your master plan, you've got your circulation plan element, you know, whether it's talking about connections to the Greenway, connections to transit, like Kevin was talking about, connection to churches, Pick your favorite you know, public location in town that we want to better connect to. This policy is something that you can use to make sure that you're making those connections that, that collectively serve to bring us all together uh, and make it easier to get around, obviously. Um, 
Two, two further points. Uh, one, one, I guess, uh, is, is just a comment on the draft resolution that I, I expect you'll, you'll take up now tonight. On the exception language, um, we appreciate that there will be instances where complete streets are not applicable and for one reason or another, uh, whether, whether it's cost or just the use of the thoroughfare, it's just not appropriate. Uh, the, one of the best practices in the field, and it's something they actually talked about today at the Complete Street Summit down at uh, Rutgers, it's ironic that we're taking this up tonight, uh, was when projects are accepted and a, and a waiver is granted by either the engineer or the, the borough administrator, that they just be publicly noticed. Um, so that the public is aware for whatever reason that there has been a waiver granted, uh, they know why. Um, so I would just consider that tonight when you're, you're uh, weighing the, the resolution. And the Mr. second. Sorry, Mr. Master, sure. it's only going to be the engineer that does the waiver. Oh, sure, no, that's and, fine. And but it's based just, on a, um, a checklist that's from DOT. Right, and, and the, the only point I'm making is that when you do grant a waiver, that you would notice that you have done so, that the right. government through the administrator or through the council would just notice the public that a waiver has been granted. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's no, it's just not on file here at Borough Hall, but the public has noticed that a waiver, for one reason or other, whatever, whatever the reason is, working off that checklist, that, that we are made aware that, that that's happened. Okay. Uh, and then the second is just an inquiry on implementation. Um, is, is it the expectation of the, of the council uh, on the implementation side, I, I see the committee, you've got a great group of people that are going to be working on next steps and where we go from here. Uh, is it expected that, that that working group will identify in its report the, the performance measures and the metrics that, that will measure success over time? Uh, is that something that you, you think we'll see in that body of work that will come forward in six months? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you. Thank you again for all your effort on this. Uh, congratulations. Uh, we're, we're super excited. And you know, on behalf of Bike Walk Metuch and, and others in town, we look forward to working with you as this thing moves along. Appreciate your Honor, it. if I may. Yes. Um, and I may not want to admit it, but I will. While you were speaking, Sean, I got a text from the council president who's in California, and it said, did it pass yet? <laughs> <laughs> so he does care deeply, dearly about it. Anyone else from the public has a question or comment? Don't hold back. <laughs> Hearing none, I'm going to close that section of the meeting. Um, you have, uh, yeah, just hold on one second. Okay. Yep. Mayor, before we accept the minutes on the Traffic and Transportation Committee meeting, I have um, two questions about the minutes. Yes. Um, under pedestrian friendly signs. The uh, minutes that we approved? No, the ones we're about to. We're no. about to approve minutes. Traffic and transportation. Oh, okay. The traffic okay. and transportation committee meeting minutes from September 11th. It says um, pedestrian friendly signs. Police had some concerns uh, about sign crowding. The committee had agreed that the town should produce and post signs at the entrances of the town that read pedestrian friendly community, pedestrian laws strictly enforced. And then it says it was decided that the council should decide based on committee and police input. How, how would we do that exactly as a council? We would have to do it by resolution. Okay. Okay. It, it, I mean, what these are, I mean, just so they submit the minutes and, and we just receive and approve their receipt. Okay. I mean, you're not taking any action. You no, I know we're not taking up. any yeah. action tonight, but is this something we would discuss in the future if this is something we wanted to move forward on, in other words? Yes. As a matter yeah. of policy. Yeah. Okay. But right now we're just accepting, um, right. receiving and accepting their minutes. Right. right. Okay. I, I would point out that except for Grove Avenue, they're all county or state highways, and they have certain criteria for posting signs. So you'd have to comply with their regulations also. So we'd have to get county approval for signage? Yes. <laughs> My second question had to do with the bridge height. Um, since Councilman Muldoon is not here, but maybe Councilman Camerano can text him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the, bridge, the bridge height. Of the bridge height question, where minutes. it says uh, in the minutes there was discussion about what could be done about uh, preventing truck strikes on the bridge, and it said uh, Jay will talk to the mayor about writing a letter to Amtrak to see if something can be done about the cost of. Uh, Amtrak doing something with the bridge on Main Street. And since I do have to uh, cross under that bridge almost every day to where I uh, need to go, I have just anecdotally seen an increasing number of bridge strikes on that bridge and I get caught in traffic uh, every week. And I'm just wondering if there's been any communication with Amtrak. 
No, there hasn't, but I've asked the Traffic and Transportation Committee to look at the, um, uh, the, the thing on Parsonage Road. There is an electronic sign that I believe DOT or Edison partly paid for, which helps to eliminate the hits on Parsonage Road, which is a similar problem. Um, having, having transit try to redo the bridge is a very expensive and long time term project. Um, and I don't know if that's a reality, but at least getting something like they have at Parsonage Road, and I asked trans traffic and transportation to look at that. Um, Yes, please. Tyree um, Ruder, 16 year old and a member of the Traffic and Transportation Committee. So that's minutes from a couple of months ago, and we have continued to look into that. Um, one of the things that we're doing is one of our committee members is reaching out for some professional advice for them to take a look at that intersection and say what approach um, would best work in that situation. The other um, is to work with the businesses in town, um, the borough council, and any other interested stakeholders, whether it's pedestrians or whatever, to um, come up with a, a letter, a joint letter to Amtrak expressing our concerns and stating some of the statistics that we got from the police chief at our last meeting, which is that there has been an increase in bridge strikes. Um, 2012, there were nine, I believe. And in 2013, uh, through the beginning of September, there were already 13. So um, there has been an increase, and the impact on businesses is, is pretty clear when they close the street for a while. Um, and I know that one of the, the officers was going to take a look at that, too, in terms of um, what that means in terms of police time, that there might, you know, to, to kind of build that in there, that if it's police time that's being taken to manage the traffic, that that's also an impact on the borough. And to try and pr present that all as like a joint measure is to um, trying to get something done because it is an issue where there has been a lot of public complaint but also it's um, very complicated in terms of the jurisdiction because there's Amtrak, New Jersey Transit, the county and the town all have different pieces and um, it's kind of you know navigating through that so mm -hmm. we're hoping to get someplace with that but we did take a look at the the um, the system down at Parsonage Road and if it's possible to do something like that, you know, like I said, one of the members is going to ask for some professional advice on that, then we would recommend that. So. Okay. Thank you. Did the police also track not only the bridge strikes, but also the near misses where they have to stop traffic to back up the trucks? You know? I, I don't believe they keep track of that. We could find them. I'm just curious them to because I'm stuck in it every uh, week. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think they would have numbers for that. They just do it. It's a, they get a call on it. They go take care of it. And, Okay. They don't record it. Yeah, or they'll even divert them up Woodbridge if they have to. Yeah, right. It would right. be in the it would be a log book, but it'd be a, a, a hard thing to uh, track. Come in and find. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you want to would uh, make a motion? Your Honor, I move the communications consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We now have the reports of the council. Uh, council President Camarino, you can go first. I'm used to going last. This isn't you, fair. You want to hit cleanup or do you want to hit first? Uh, no, okay. um, Your Honor, the library board continues to move forward on interviewing and uh, searching for a new director. We are getting very close, and I think we'll be wrapping that up in the, probably in the near future. Uh, we had some great candidates. We had a lot of candidates, and the board has done a tremendous job at, at and put in, put in a lot of time and, and energy into narrowing it down to finalists who I think uh, are all very well qualified and would serve well um, <coughs> at the library. Uh, residents should continue to check the programming at the library. Um, there's a number of programs that are going on on a continual basis for all levels. Um, anybody with children should visit the new children's room where they also have the programming, but it just looks great. So if you haven't been in there in a while, you're really in for a shock. It's not, not quite done yet, but it, it's about 95% of the way there. And again, it was a project driven by the board. Uh, many hours put in, including by Linda here tonight, um, in her spare time, which I don't know how she has any. Many hours put in uh, planning, overseeing, and, and working to see that project through. So if you do have children, go down there. It's really, a, if you haven't been in there in a while, even if you don't, if you have children who are older, you're going to go in and say, boy, am I jealous of what, what it used to look like. Um, the Friends of the Library will be holding their annual meeting. Um, 
they held it, I'm sorry. Uh, they do it this time every year. I always get confused by that. Probably put it on the wrong day on my calendar, probably. Um, and that's the meeting where they make their annual donation, usually. I don't know if they, did, they do that. Um, and the Friends are, it's a valuable asset to the library. When you, I say it every year when you add up all the, the money that they contribute over time, it is absolutely staggering um, how much money they've donated to the library for programming and for improvements. Uh, so people should uh, join the Friends if they can or at least support some of their fundraising efforts. Uh, the pool committee met last week and discussed uh, some improvements to the computer system, the admission system for the cards, uh, and they're trying to make a determination if they're going to improve upon that system, as well as other issues getting ready for next year already. Um, there's not much time for looking back and saying, okay, what do we do? Well, right away it starts planning for the next year. Uh, EMS was in tonight, and I can't say enough about the job they do. Most people don't understand EMS is not part of the borough like the fire department is. So their funding is just about entirely from private donations and donations from organizations in town. Uh, and they, the members donate a tremendous amount of time and energy responding to calls at all hours, day and night, but also running the building, running, making sure they're staffed. It, it's, it's incredible, and I never had a full appreciation until I got there at how much work they do beyond responding to actual calls, which they do somehow manage to cover. So if you can, uh, look out for their fund drive. It is coming up. They could use all the help they, they need. They have seen an uptick in volunteers lately, which is a good sign. It's allowed them to cover just about every shift they have. So it's good service to the borough for a good good price actually and uh, we need to support them as well I have no further report thank you uh, council uh, councilman Wallace thank you your honor <laughs> unfortunately he left but uh, I had a few things I'd like to say about Jim Graziano before I start my report I happen to know a little bit about emergency management seeing as I was uh, Jim's predecessor and the amount of time uh, and effort he puts in and the money he recoups for the borough whenever it's available He's always right on top of it. And uh, he got a radio station. I don't know, a lot of people don't realize, but Metuchen has a radio station. He acquired a radio station for us and uh, put all the time and energy into getting it here. And like I said, a, a lot of people don't realize, but Metuchen has a radio station for emergencies and everything. When schools are closed and uh, other different things, that you can get off this radio station. It's, he's there. Thank you. Uh, Traffic and transportation did meet uh, a couple weeks ago, and they support this uh, uh, complete streets uh, resolution 100%. They're working on a, a lot of things, and one was the, uh, the bridge height thing they've been discussing about it because uh, they thought it was important. And uh, I don't, when uh, Councilwoman Acero said uh, Jay, I don't know whether you thought it was Jay Muldoon that was going to talk to the mayor. Coincidentally, the chairman of the uh, traffic transportation name is Jay. <laughs> He's the one who was going to talk to the mayor about the letter. Stand corrected. That's okay. Uh, but the, they they're they're working on a survey of the flags and uh, possible uh, other places to put them if it, the survey looks good. And there's a lot of things they're they're doing quietly working on, and uh, haven't come to fruition yet. The uh, Recreation Commission, this Saturday is the pumpkin carving, but they're not having the Saturday night float on Tommy's Palm with them. Uh, they're they're going to do the, the, the carving in the afternoon, but no floating at night at uh, Tommy's Pond like they've done in the past. Put them out there on a little uh, thing and float them out there. The Halloween parade is in the Pearl Street uh, parking lot Sunday afternoon, and the vehicles They'll be giving out candy. will be parked around the parking lot. And then some people will have tables down there for the kids to, to get their candy down, down in the uh, Pearl Street parking lot. And then that's the reports of the different commissions. As most of you know, I spend a lot of time on the Greenway uh, walking, and I'm about to uh, ready to advance to being a bicyclist down there. <laughs> Look out. But I'm down there 
And just uh, after you pass Goodwill Place coming uh, into town, there's a real nice area of growth of, uh, of uh, bamboo. And somebody, uh, one time I missed two days in a row and, and I come back and they went in there, trampled it all down, broke it all up and everything. And it, it, that's really irritating to me because the bamboo area down there is really nice and the, whoever did it uh, wrecked the bamboo and uh, I just wish I was there and, and caught him because uh, I would have personally brought him to the other part of the building here to talk to the people around the corner. But uh, I took some pictures, which don't mean anything to anybody else, but I, I just brought them along with me tonight. Anybody wants to, any other council people want to look at them after the meeting, I'll be there to, to show them. But uh, I, I walked down there almost daily. I was there today. And uh, like I said uh, last week, because uh, I had gone for some procedures, I missed a few days. And when I came back, I saw this damage. And it, you can ask my wife, she was with me. Uh, I was highly irritated and uh, upset about the why they would go in there and ruin that nice bamboo patch there. And you can see where they walked in it, where they took them and broke them in half, and y you can see everything in the pictures that I did take. I know the police patrol it, uh, but uh, it's just uncalled for. That's my report, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, one other thing that I, I think that the councilman uh, collected to say is that he had a request for a pedestrian sign on Grove by the temple. There used to be one there, one in the middle of the road, uh, crosswalk uh, pedestrian safety signs. And uh, he called me. I talked to the captain, and uh, DPW is in the process. The work order is already filed, so hopefully within the next, uh, next week or so, we'll have that sign up. So that, that, will, that will help. And thank you, Councilman, for bringing that to my attention. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Rasmussen. Okay. Um, the Youth Services Board uh, met last week. And uh, coming up uh, Saturday, October 26th, I think it's a Saturday, um, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is going to be Take Back Day, where you can bring your prescription medication to the police station that it will be safely disposed of. And. Um, the treasure hunt will continue uh, this week, and I kind of have a little flyer here. And okay, I'm going to get back here. Yeah, October 26th, right? Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it's going to be at the uh, police station. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the Metuchen treasure hunt, which is the uh, fundraiser um, yard sale activity that's going on at the Pearl Street parking lot. Um, also on Saturday the 26th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. will be the last day that you'll be able to sell your stuff. And uh, tables are um, $10 to rent the space, but you, if you need an actual table, you can also rent that for $5. And uh, the clergy association, um, of which one of my members is involved in the Youth Services Board, is sponsoring a community health fair Sunday, November 10th from 1 to 5 p.m at the JFK Conference Center in Edison, and there'll be um, free health screenings. You'll be able to talk to healthcare providers and learn about the latest health and personal products and services. So this is a great opportunity. If you know someone that needs some kind of health services, they'll be able to get some free screenings. And uh, the Youth Services Board is still working on the implementation of safe homes, and it is possible that we can sign up some parents at the project graduation events where there will be a large percentage of families who would benefit by this program. And then the Youth Alliance Division of the Youth Services Board is working on a program to spread the word about the 9-11 legislation, meaning if a young person is out with a group of kids and they are drinking or whatever, and uh, one of the young people gets in trouble and becomes very ill, that there'll be no charges against um, any of the other uh, people involved if they call and get help for their friend. And um, also due to new funding requirements by our grant, we are looking at options to allow us to continue to donate to Project Graduation. Um, one of the options that we are considering is having packets of information at their fundraiser events for parents to take home and review with their children. And the Environmental Commission uh, also met last week. And uh, one of the things we discussed was the um, estimate of a digital mapping costs as it pertains to the Edison Wetlands grant that we're trying to get. 
Uh, we're trying to get that information, and um, we have a few people working on it in the group that's more familiar with it. And I'm also, we had a very good turnout um, at the Environmental Commission booth at the fair, and uh, it was very uh, active there. A lot of people coming by, seeing some of the information that we have, and people were very interested in the Greenway and the Dismal Brook. And also we had a petition signed, um, I guess, to forward um, the Greenway um, into the Dismal Swamp. And uh, they would like to, at some point, maybe send that information up to Senator Menendez to see if we can get um, you know, some, something done to extend the Greenway. And uh, that's my report. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman and Sarah? Thank you, Mayor. I have no report tonight from the Senior Citizens Commission or the Chamber, uh, Chamber of Commerce. The Board of Health met last week, and uh, we heard from the Girl Scouts about the dog park. We got a preliminary presentation, and we discussed some uh, health concerns uh, about having a dog park, and there really aren't too many that would uh, come into play that would involve the Board of Health. The Board of Health also passed on first reading the heating ordinance regarding the temperature of rental units. Um, and one thing I'll just say about uh, Complete Streets, I just want to say I'm really gratified and impressed that so many of our residents came out tonight to support it. Another note I want to make is that I think our policy is a great start, and I'm happy that we're finally voting on it tonight. I also want to make the point that Metuchen is small enough that I think about how um, all the streets really are interconnected, and while the policy talks about priorities and focus areas, I'm thinking about the neighbors who came out a few weeks ago from uh, Homestead and Alden and talking about how they felt cut off from the rest of the town and they talked about getting across Route 27 and um, you know complete streets you know hopefully will help us with the DOT with our issues with Route 27. Uh, as a matter of fact I went to the complete streets uh, summit that uh, was mentioned today and I'd also like to point out that Karen Alexander who came to the mic before was actually one of the featured speakers at that conference. So it's gratifying to know that within our own community we have speakers who uh, are at conferences such as these. And I look forward to hearing from our borough engineer in a few months about what strong implementation measures we'll be putting into place. So thank you, that's my report. Okay, uh, Councilman Grayzell. I have nothing to report tonight, Mayor. Okay, and um, if you could make the arrangements for the meeting on Monday with, that, with the group. I know it's a large group, uh, so I don't expect everybody to be there, but okay. Uh, Dennis, do you have a report? No, Mayor, I have no report. Bill? I have no report. Okay, I just have a couple items. Uh, one, on November 1st, uh, Council President Muldoon and Councilman uh, Camerano and I and the Chairman of the Parking Authority will be meeting with Transit to try to encourage them for uh, talk to them about grants for extending the platform here the platforms here in the uh, tomorrow we have a finance committee meeting at 8 30 and uh, basically that's that covers my report so your honor I move the new business consent agenda items A through D encompassing resolutions 2013-203 through 2013-206. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Your Honor, I move resolution number 2013-207. Okay, Bill, could you just give us a little background on this? Oh, sorry, is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, you may recall that this was part of the capital program uh, for uh, 2013, uh, and I believe you all understand that these are the council chamber cameras and the related electronic equipment uh, for uh, production of the METV uh, council uh, meeting. Uh, we received, unfortunately, one bid uh, from HB Communications, Inc., that bid, uh, again, unfortunately, was over the uh, quote that we had received back in January by some $3,500. Um, so really the question before you tonight is whether you want to accept this uh, one bid and uh, go forward or whether you want to uh, uh, 
uh, not accept the bid and authorize to go back out to bid to see if we can do any better. Um, and I guess it would just be anybody's guess as to whether uh, we would do any better, whether we would get a bid, uh, or whether it would be lower. It's open to the discussion of the council. Yeah, Bill, my question is how many vendors did the information go out to? Well, this is advertised in the newspaper as required by law. Um, I think there were a couple that picked up. I, d I, I don't remember exactly how many there were. Do you remember, Katie? There were two, okay. Uh, unfortunately, this is a, uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's extremely complex, but you're dealing with a system that's already in place. It's not like uh, supplying everything to hook up our cameras uh, downstairs that will be uh, hooked up into equipment that we already own. Uh, I don't know if that's a factor. Um, it's, it's anybody's guess. They don't tell you. I, I know uh, prices do go up, of course, uh, in the um, 10 months that we've had uh, in between the quote. Um, so uh, it's really up to you. I, any other council member want to speak on this? Can the TV and Technology Commission uh, people provide any guidance on this? Well, the, guide, the guidance is that we had a recommendation to do upgrade the cameras. I don't know. I don't see how they can. I mean, okay. we went out to bid for specific equipment to deal with what we need to deal with here, um, and we got uh, the one bid back. I don't think the commission has any particular expertise in this area. Okay. So it's, the options are either reject this bid and then rebid it with the chance that we would get other bidders or not get other bidders. Um, the price went up $3,500, which was roughly 10% over the 10 month period. If we rebid it, we could end up getting a higher price. We could also get, end up getting a lower price, but since only two companies picked up the packets, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of interest in it for bidding. So it's it's up to you to make the decision: either accept the bid or reject it, and then order the borough administrator to rebid it. I just want to know what your pleasure is. Like, like what is wrong with the cameras? I mean, are they out of date? Do they not? Um they're 10 years Work. old. Uh, they are uh, becoming impossible to repair. Um, if you don't care whether the council meetings are televised anymore, you can reject the bids and we'll go back to the well, old way of they, doing they it. They do function. We're running the risk that they'll break and they can't well, be they repaired. Have but they, they've they're broken. currently they, functioning. They're broken so numerous times, however. The risk is it's impossible to find parts. Right. Um, the expense of uh, repairing them is more than replacing them. Um, the longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to be. Um, you know, I mean, you take the risk that if you go out to bid, that you're not going to get anybody to bid. Um, you also take the risk. Or you, there, there's also a possibility that uh, another uh, company will bid. However, I would say since this is very specialized equipment, um, that's probably doubtful. What's your recommendation, Bill? Well, I really have no uh, recommendation. I understand your concerns. I mean, that was the reason that uh, I, I spoke to the mayor about it initially and, and asked him um, what he wanted to do. He said, uh, let's put it on the agenda and see what you folks want to do. It's a, it's a, it's a hard call, uh, really. Well, based on the discussion so far, it appears it was only one bidder. We need the equipment. I think the likelihood of rebidding it and getting a lower price does not seem to be particularly high. And I would, I would support the resolution to award the bid and get the job done. I agree with you, Councilman. My fear is that if, if in 10 months it went up 10% and we rebid it, there's another few months it could be up another five percent or so and we'll end up paying more rather than accepting the bid that we got. Plus it costs money to rebid it too so mm -hmm. I, I agree we should probably go along with this. Okay. This isn't like consumer electronics equipment. There's not going to be a Black Friday sale. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> so. 
No. Good so then, could we have a motion to accept you the have, bid? We have a motion, have a motion and a second. Okay, so motion and a second. Then all in favor of resolution 2013-207, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Your Honor. Did anyone say no? Oh, is there any anybody opposed? Your Honor, I'm going to oppose it. I just the okay. single bit bothers me. Okay. And I, I don't disagree with anything anybody said, but I just can't do it. Okay. So the resolution carries four to one. Okay. Next Your res Honor, I move resolution number 2013-208. Okay. Uh, Bill, can you fill us? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Can you fill us in a little bit on this? One? I don't know that there's much to add. I believe that the resolution speaks for itself. I don't think anybody understands the in, in, the details of it. So I mean, if you can just give a quick overview of it. I mean, we talked about this two years ago, so I get it now. Well, it wasn't quite two years ago, Councilman. But uh, right, do we do have currently a 457 plan, which is established pursuant to the federal. In, Internal Revenue Codes uh, 457 plan is like a 401k plan, except it's uh, particular to uh, state and local governments. Um, essentially, what it is, the Deferred Compensation Plan, um, the PVA requested that we look at a couple of other plans, or one in particular. There are very strict guidelines promulgated by the DCA concerning the uh, implementation or, or the actual um, obtaining of one of these plans. Um, I've been working with the, the borough attorney uh, to come up with an RFP. I had to completely write an RFP myself. That was time consuming. Um, this is not something that the borough has to do. There's no requirement. Uh, again, this would be uh, whatever plan is chosen would be in addition to the current plan that we have. Um, there are only six companies that are authorized to provide such a plan in New Jersey. But this is borough employees' money, not borough money. Pre-tax. That would go into this. Contributions by the employer. There's no oh, yeah. matching contribution by the borough. Okay. And there's well, no cost to the borough, correct? Well, there are costs, of course, for my time, and you've got your know, payroll and accounting time, yes. Okay. But it's, See, it's somewhat minimal. And we do that now for other plans, correct? One other plan. One other plan? One other plan. So um, we're just adding another option. Well, we would be determining what we get in. I'm, I'm trying to, to, in the RFP, narrow it to plans that provide something different than the plan that we have. I mean, our, our plan is very comprehensive. It has, I can't, I don't even know, maybe 30 investment opportunities of all different types. Um, it's probably the oldest 457 plan that's operating in the country. It's fully portable, um, which is why we went with that many years ago. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to get a little more basic here because I'm really not following some of the dialogue. I understand that municipal employees um, all have pension plans. So apparently we're talking about something akin to a 401k plan that exists for municipal employees that you call a 457 plan? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Is this resolution a resolution that has something to do with a 457 plan or some other additional plan? No, it's a 457 plan, an additional 457 plan. And we already have existing 457 plans? Yes. One. We okay. have one. Okay. But and the employees have asked to see if they could get an other options. As a, as a borough, as a school employee, I had, I think, five or six different options. Okay. So what, what I don't understand is who, who participates in the existing 457 plan? It's purely voluntary. Okay, how many voluntary participants do we have? I mean, do we have one participant, oh, no. five participants? We have uh, possibly 30. Okay, and that includes police officers, public works employees, municipal employees. So what happens is, is that they have a payroll deduction that comes entirely out of their own pay that gets circuited to a tax-free 401k equivalent. 
a tax deferred. Correct. Tax deferred. Um, the employee gets to determine the amount of money that they want to contribute um, to the plan. Uh, there are certain um, maximums that uh, are extended uh, periodically throughout the years, um, and the employee uh, has the option of investing the money in, I don't hold me to this, about 30 instruments, from very conservative uh, money market type funds to um, international growth funds, et cetera. And who administers this plan or these plans? Well, the, 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 uh, it's set up, th um, the ICMA Retirement Corporation um, is the umbrella group that uh, administers the plan. I mean, we, uh, we administer it in terms of making the deductions and sending them, just like we do um, the pension funds, any uh, life insurance uh, plans that the borough has, or, or other voluntary deductions. So then based on what you're saying to us is other than the whatever the costs are in terms of administering the payroll deductions, there's no out-of-pocket um, touch and borough funds that go toward this. Is that correct? Well, no, I mean, th there are, th there's, there's payroll and accounting time and in my time, any ancillary time, no, the employees pay whatever the broker fees are and the administrative fees to the retirement RC. Okay. All right. This just basically will give them other options. Okay. Okay. I should the, should should we should decide we to right. choose one? Um, once the once the uh, proposals are, are given back to us. Okay. Okay, I got it. We have a motion and a second. Um, is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That motion, that resolution carries. Your Honor, I move resolution number 2013-210, uh, the complete street resolution. The councilwoman and Sarah, would you second it, please? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Here, hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? when we adopt something. Uh, I, 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 it's going to move. Go ahead. I move the bill resolution. The amount of they may not be applauding that, though. $230,188.80. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're paying our bills. Uh, I'd like to open it to the public for any questions or comments. Anyone with a question or comment, please step forth. State your name and address. Lindsay Kaskowski, Three Goodwill Place. Um, I got nervous halfway through my comments before, and I forgot to finish up by saying I really supported the, the um, Complete Streets resolution, <laughs> and I'm really happy you passed it. Thank you. Anyone else? Here, oh, okay. Tom Rockwell at 36 Linden Avenue. Thank you very much for passing this policy. I think it's gonna be great with all the development that's going to be scheduled to happen in town and uh, congestion is not going to go anywhere so building the infrastructure to accommodate other modes of transportation will be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, I'm going to close that section of the meeting. Your Honor, I move for adjournment. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much for a very good meeting. And public, thank you very much for your comments this evening. We appreciate it.